So, you know, I thought we'd look at the Constitution. A, a, a caller last hour was right on the money when he said, you know, this center that can take your, uh, your gun away without due process. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one. That's a you know, violation of the Second Amendment. But it's also uh, a violation of many other amendments. I want to go through the, the, you know, just the first 10 amendments, okay? First of all, do you know how the Bill of Rights came about? Listen to what they wrote. This is, this is at the top of the page. Resolved. Resolved by the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, two-thirds of both houses concurring that the following articles be proposed to the legislatures of several states as amendments to the Constitution of the United States. So here's a group of people. Imagine this. Two-thirds say... We believe these things should be done, but we have to send them to all of the states to ratify, and they need two-thirds to be able to pass it in their state, and then we will need two-thirds of all the states to agree. Okay? Wow, what a process. And what are they trying to do? Get themselves a raise? No. Give themselves more power? No. The exact opposite. Here's what they say. Um, The amendments to the Constitution of the United States, all or any of which articles, when ratified by three-fourths of the legislatures, to be valid in all intents and purposes as part of said Constitution. Articles in addition to and amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America proposed by Congress and ratified by the legislature of several states. They're saying here (laughs) that the Constitution After the convention, a number of states, having at the time adopted the Constitution, this is in the little preamble here, expressed a desire in order to prevent misconstruction or abuse of its power. So the guys in the government said, I'm afraid people are going to abuse the power and misunderstand the Constitution. So... Quote, further declaratory and restrictive clauses should be added. And as extending the ground of public confidence in the government will best ensure the, uh, the benefit ends of the institution. So they're saying, look, nobody trusts the government right now. Does that sound familiar? Nobody trusts the government right now. So we want to pass, an, uh, we want to pass several amendments here that will protect the rights and make sure that the hands are tied of the federal government. They're saying these are restrictive clauses. And by, by telling the people, we will never do these things, confidence will be gained. I contend our, our problem is we're no longer unified on these 10 articles. We no longer care about them. We no longer learn them, teach them, know them. So here's Article 1. Amendment number 1. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. I contend we are violating that right now because what we are celebrating is a religion. It has a cult following. It has nothing to do with science or even common sense. It has a tribunal that will excommunicate you from society if you don't get involved. It has rituals. It has laws that you just must accept on faith. I know that's pushing it, but I think they're doing that. Uh, They are also breaking the second part of the First Amendment, prohibiting the free exercise of religion. They did that during covid abridging the freedom of speech or of the press and the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. They don't want you standing up. They don't want you standing up. They'll do everything they can to make sure you sit down. If you're a constitutionalist, enough of this national Christian nationalist stuff, enough of that. Don't dismiss it. It's real. 
It's very, very small, but it's real. So don't call yourself a Christian nationalist. Don't allow yourself to fall into that trap. No, you're not. You might be a Christian, but you are also a constitutionalist. You believe in the Constitution of the United States and the Articles of uh, the Constitution of the Bill of Rights. You believe in all of that stuff. That's all you want. Article 2, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That's the one that everybody will look to on this particular uh, new center from the Department of Justice. They... (laughs) A well-regulated militia. Would that make sense? Would it make sense that the people couldn't have guns and the federal government would have a huge army? No. In fact, we never had a standing army. We were the soldiers. We would be called up to arms. So you'd have your own arms. And then when there was war, you'd be called up in a militia, okay? But you had the right to protect yourself with a gun as well. Not I was for fishing or hunting or one of those things. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Article 3, I think we can skip over. No, well, no, actually not. No soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. So Article 3, I think you could make the case, I don't think you'd win, but you could make the case that our government is quartered. Soldiers are quartered in our house because they are in a public-private partnership with Amazon and everybody else. They are They're gaining access to our papers, to our letters, to our emails, to our phone calls. That's what the government was doing that made this article important. The king would say, you know what, find out what those guys are doing over there. And you know what, just go into their house. You live there. I'm going to quarter you in their house so you can spy on them. Well, it's just in a different way, but that's what's happening. Fourth Amendment. The right of people to be secure in their persons. Do you feel secure in your person? Houses, paper, effects against all unreasonable search and seizures shall not be violated. It's violated all the time. We've talked about this many times. How many people have you know, been driving down the street and they had money in their car and they were going to go buy another car and they were going to buy it in cash and they're stopped their cash is taken, no due process. I think you're a drug lord. That wait, what? No warrants shall issue but upon probable cause. This is a general warrant. This is why they were this is why this is in here. Um in Article four, uh, no warrants shall be uh no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause. General warrants used to be You know, there's something going on with that guy. Go find out. And they could search for anything. Anywhere. No, no general warrants. You have to know and tell the judge, I'm going in for this document or this particular item, and I believe it's here. Great. So the judge will say, you can go there in their house and look for it. But no general warrants. You can't, you can't go in and just try to find something. Um, <clears throat> no person shall be held to answer for capital, otherwise infamous crime, unless uh, the presentment or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arriving in the land or naval forces or in the militia, when in actual service in time of war or public danger. No shall any per- nor shall any person be subject to the same offense twice, to be put in jeopardy of life or limb, nor shall he be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Those are being uh, violated, but in particular with this new center where they can take, come into your house and take your guns without due process. 
clear violation of the uh, Bill of Rights. Clear. So you got three of them now <clears throat> that have been broken just for this one ro- law. Don't tell me you love democracy. Don't tell me you love freedom. Don't tell me you're trying to save the Republican. You love the Constitution. If you're violating this many, and we're only halfway through. You are in direct violation of the Bill of Rights. Article 6, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial. Has that happened with those who are still waiting for trial for January 6th? By, how is it they, can, they have to wait so long, but Donald Trump has to be done by this summer? Why is that? Are all men created equal? Are we... Are we looking at the, the people of January 6th with the same blind justice eyes as Donald Trump? No, of course we're not. Violation of the Constitution. By an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed. Impartial jury. If you can't get an impartial jury, what do you do? You can't get an impartial jury. You ask for a change of venue where you can get an impartial jury. You don't have an impartial jury um, uh, uh, pool in Washington, D.C. You don't. And to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation. To be confronted with the witnesses against him. To have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor and have the assistance of counsel for his defense. In this new center that they announced, you don't get the due process. You don't get to face the witness. You don't know the cause of accusation. You have nothing on your side. 